Good to see you, Davey. Good to see you, Dave, as always. Yeah, always. Um, a few gentlemen have been viewing our vignettes that we've been working on, and uh, a few questions have popped up, and so I just want to get a few of these out of the way. I, I guess they've taken a shine to the... It's, 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 a, it's a beautiful little uh, diorama slash vignette. Yeah, so one of the uh, questions out there was um, how the corn arrived. Well, before we, before I talk about the actual product used, I'd just like to say that for the guys to use photographic reference because yeah. it wasn't grown everywhere. That's true. It, it, just certainly in France and, and maybe parts of Russia, yes, but as you and I both know, um, uh, th this could jam up a guy's uh, vignette <laughs> saying that it's in Germany or something and it, it wasn't grown there, you know. Or somewhere in the South Pacific if you're doing like a Marine Sherman diorama or something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So corn is not one of those um, staples that that's grown worldwide. <laughs> so just so that people know, do a little uh, historical background first. But the, uh, the products used... Um, as you know, Hornet Hobbies sells airplanes and cars and, and, and um, train sets and what have you. And um, fortunately, because I'm one of the few hobby shop owners that builds models, and <laughs> um, it's nice to see that Andy, down at Andy head, Andy's hobby headquarters, he's obviously a great builder and, and has fun doing yep. his stuff. So he would know all about where these come from. But, but um, not every hobby shop necessarily would search out 35th scale corn stocks <laughs> yeah. and and they're hard to find so um what i what i did was um started looking through the model railroading section of our walters catalog and um different places to find vegetation and things so um these come from a product called jtt and they're o gauge which is 48 scale um you know train add-ons you know for the vegetation for train layouts <laughs> yeah but they uh but you know what how tall is corn well <laughs> at different times of the year it's shorter than at other times that's right um so that's where that's where this started from and the and i think these are the same products just different packaging but when they changed the packaging they they altered the numbers too but uh nine five five one two from jtt is this package and I think this is the exact same package, just with a, a little less corn. Uh, 95553 are the product numbers, um, if you're looking. And basically, you know, Dave, these are, um, they don't come in any, I think they may come in a, in a really soft beige color, but none of it that works for our purposes. Yeah, because you know? there's obviously a difference in the color that you have here in the package versus what you've got in your, your nice little vignette here. Yeah. And I have to be honest with the customers, it took as long to paint the corn as it did to paint the tiger. So um, what you're going to have to do, these are on wire or metal stems, each and every one of them, so that the, the like model railroaders will plant them into a, a, a styrofoam or what have you, and then carry on. Um, they work great, they'll last forever, but I basically had to hang on to each and every one of these and paint them almost individually. <laughs> wow. So, and I painted them like a lot of my groundwork. I painted them jet black first from underneath, creating a shadow, and then flipped them over and started with, um, again, you guys know that I'm stealing colors from the tiger tank to paint the plants, and, and I do the same as you know for the groundwork. So this would have been XF, to me, XF60 with a heck of a lot of thinner, which is the same yellow pattern that's on this tank. Mm. I find that um, just the store-bought green is... Yeah, it doesn't, you know, doesn't look quite right. It yeah. doesn't look quite right for, for the kind of stuff that you and I do. So, um, so then you're going to have to basically paint each stock um, individually with, a, with your airbrush. And the amount of time it took... Oh, I bet you this corn took at least two weeks to paint, you know? I don't believe it. And um, there's highlighting on some of the leaves that are on the perimeter of the base and um, insect, you know, the things are different now than, say, in 1943 or 44. Um, 
So there's little insect um, leaves that have been chewed on, and they're brown in yeah, color. And, and I mean, it might be it'd be almost impossible for the camera to pick up, but here I can see on the on these stalks here, there's a couple of like kind of brown black areas. Yeah, representing exactly. that. So that, that's yeah, that's the veg that's vegetation wonderful. that have been, and then where the tiger has cut through, and again, as you guys know as well, Dave and I, because we may enter this in a certain category at a show, just on its own, uh, at IPMS. Um, groupings that um, having these just entered like that is why we don't glue them down but um, a lot of the corn that's been crushed here other than the stalks themselves I just cut tin foil and all that is is painted tin foil leaves that you know um, again because I use such a small palette for my colors it was easy to to match the colors and so I'll just tilt this up um, like so and you can see where the tank has um, thrashed its way through there. But most of the um, ears off of the corn stalks here are just painted tin foil, mm. you know, from Mother's Kitchen. <laughs> and then just cut it into the appropriate um, shapes and sizes. And of course, tin foil has no memory, so the way you bend it is the way it's going to stay. And um, so it works out. It works out to be pretty good vegetation yep. for the corn. Yeah, I, right. There's actually. And this being late in the season, um, there's actually no corn cobs. You know, that's all been sent to the cattle or, um, you know, things like that. So the, the actual cobs of corn are missing, but... So oh, hence, uh, the, hence the, the yellowing of the, of the leaves. And yeah, this would be the September or October of a, of a, you know, 43 or 44. So, um, again, guys have to keep that in mind. And... Uh, and then to make the corn look taller, I made a little, a bit of a, a ditch or a, a dugout for one of the crewmen to stand in. And what that does, as far as the vignette goes, is that it's trickier of the eye in a way. Because as you can see, suddenly the, this poor little soldier here is up to his eyelashes in pretty tall corn. But it's just basically because I built a little trough there for a machine gun nest. And um, it makes the corn appear to be taller. And um, that's basically it. And I'd like to uh, to just say that um, just to just to be careful with your history books, because um, corn didn't back in nine, you know, in that time frame didn't grow everywhere. So anyway, there you are. So easy to do. And I'm going to actually do an airbrushing class on how I painted a couple of these corn nice, stalks nice. because it's uh, it's like I say it's one of those things that took a couple of weeks to do so and uh, yeah so we'll go into depth on that moving a little bit forward fantastic and you wanted to mention a little bit of yeah tracks for your brumbar yeah so for the um, for the brumbar build that we're doing uh, here um, it's uh, against the Tamiya kit and the, the Tamiya kit itself is absolutely fantastic uh, the only part that's maybe a bit of a letdown is the rubber band tracks on it. And trying to get a, a nice sag over the upper uh, return right. rollers with a, with a rubber band track is a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky to do. Uh, you know, we can get away with it with the Sherman because the Sherman uh, yeah, as a whole is a pretty... Have it tight. Yeah, they're, they're kind of live tracks as they call them. Uh, whereas uh, here I really wanted to get a bit of a sag on them and I think that just adds a nice visual interest. So um, there's a lot of... Uh, yeah, these days, the modeler has a, a plethora of choices uh, in the aftermarket. Um, but I came across these. I picked these up at a show, um, and I got these from the uh, from Ed Kubiak at the Barrel Store. And these are uh, these are plastic tracks. Uh, they're made by a company called Kaizen, and they uh, they have uh, uh, different types. They have uh, other types of German tracks: uh, Panther, Tiger, um, uh, different uh, types of uh, Panzer IV. So they have. We can get down to the very specific. There's. Uh, yeah. There's a probably uh, 40 centimeter width. And, Ex exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. The early the, early war stuff. There's a whole well. there's a whole separate school of study on Panzer IV tracks. Um, so, I was looking uh, high and low for uh, to replicate the ones that came with the kit, and uh, these were the only guys I could find. Uh, and I had a couple of these in my in my stash. I hadn't tried them, but uh, so I got to I got to uh, working on these. And these are these are plastic, so they come on sprues like this. But the molding. Uh, is extremely fine. It's it's actually beautifully done. 
and there's uh, five points to detach. Um, so just with a nice set of clippers or snippers, you, you cut them off, a couple of swipes of the sanding stick, and you're good to go. It comes with uh, various lengths of wire. This is nice, uh, strong, uh, I guess this is brass wire that you would use. So you, as you clean them up, they, they come pre-drilled. And I was a little oh, bit worried. Wow. Yeah, I was a little bit, and you can see kind of the, the slide molding that they oh, use, yeah, right? right? Yeah. You get them in. And I was a little bit worried because you, you get a lot of these plastic tracks that are apparently pre-drilled or even some of the resin ones, and you still got to go at them with a pin vise. <laughs> yeah. But actually, I was able to assemble these, this length of about, this is, I guess this is about eight separate track lengths um, last night. And it took me maybe 10 minutes to do. Uh, That's great. Very yeah. easy. Um, they come uh, left hand and right hand on here. So you can see there's a little bit of notion for the right hand tracks and the left hand tracks. And the only difference between them is that what they do is they have the, the wire that you're inserting for the, uh, for the right hand tracks would, exactly, would go on the inside of the vehicle. So you don't see the wire when you're looking at it. There's a nice um, molded yeah. in track pin on this side here for the for the part that you right. can see. So oh, that's a great little feature. Yeah, well thought out, and I I tried it on the sprocket of the um, of the brim bar, so it, it works. You know, it fits it like a like a glove. It fits it beautifully, so it will work on the on the new um, uh, the the, the Ag fans that they released a couple of years ago. Um, well, that's great, and are they? Uh Reasonable in price and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, they must be. Yeah, uh, these these were a little less than frill tracks. Yeah, because these were maybe steel. these were maybe I think thirty dollars. Whereas the frill tracks around here, thirty. I'm talking thirty Canadian, so it might be a little bit yeah less in the U.S. Um, and and the frill tracks are typically you know forty five fifty yeah. plus, right? So yeah, so they're and and the nice it, yeah. and the nice thing about these is that they don't they're, they're plastic. So the problem with some of the frill tracks and and you've you've talked about this uh, before, Dave. Is that because of the weight of the tracks, the the, the suspension or the or the, the bogies or whatnot can can potentially bend over time. Yeah, the, there's no question that the rear axle in, in um, you know some of these Tamiya kits being plastic, the weight, especially on a larger tank, uh, and and even a, a stretch on these, yeah, over time, the axle, the plastic axles can. Sometimes I've heard guys that will take. Um, in, in their stash they'll have a little bit of plastic and the back end of their tanks will have plastic and then the rest all oh, okay perfect you know yeah. which, which solves that problem but this seems to solve the problem even better yeah and, and they're and you can see here they're completely workable so you know to be able to get these on that's the nice thing about workable tracks is that you can paint them off the vehicle you can weather them and then you can put them on and you can work in the track side exactly the way you want it they're lightweight, so they're not going to stress the, the suspension yeah, the, of, of, the, of the vehicle. Right. Yeah. Um, and they're and they're actually beautifully detailed. So I'm I'm a real big fan of these. Oh, uh, of tell these the um, audience the product number. I'm oh sure yeah, it's hiding out somewhere. It's uh, so this one here is you can see it here. It's KZ dash PZ dash four hundred LW, and I don't know if they actually incorporate maybe some of the details of the actual German designation for these in, in the model number but they're absolutely yeah they're, they're, they're fantastic I, if you yeah if you're, if so you're looking for a, a plastic set of tracks to use uh, these guys I think yeah and I and I don't sell them here at the corner hobby so don't call looking for those but um, as you said the barrel store here in Ontario he'll have them and, and I'm sure he ships worldwide so if, he, if you're looking for this particular track and can't find them in your neighborhood Give the barrel store an email, and uh, I'm sure Ed will be glad to send them off to you. Yeah, and they have a they have a good website. They have everything, all their products listed. Oh, they they that is pretty good. Ed does up a great date, job. So. Yeah, really, really good job. Yeah, so Fantastic. so we'll do uh, another episode on um, maybe just building these and and painting them and weathering them as part of the the whole Brum Bar thing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It should be part of our Brum Bar um, segment of the show. So. All right, so moving forward, Dave and I will be back. Uh, as you know, um, uh, we've got sort of 2018 planned pretty well, at least up until uh, the end of July or August. So um, we've got lots to show you and lots of tips. So stay with us, and uh, any questions, just forward them on. Don't Thanks change, so much, Dave. Don't change that channel. No, don't change the channel. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>